how will you deal with a family member that announces they are gay? How do you deal with him or her? A family member that announces, how do you deal with a family member that announces they are gay, he or she is gay? How do you deal with him or should you love the person for instance? accept him for his sexual retention or do you say something to him from the scripture to advise him that this is not the way God wants us to enjoy intimacy with our partners so the person wants to know how do you deal with somebody a family member that announces that ma I'm gay papa I'm gay I'm lesbian I'm this and that how do you because this is a serious issue how do one does one deals with it? Can you please pass the mic to Pastor Hilda? Yeah, answer that. Yes, uh, I'll answer it by giving you an example of a pastor that I know. His son announced that he was gay. You know, um, and so many years later, he's come out of it. So it takes a lot of love. You know, the Bible says love conquers all. You know, we tend to think, you know, because somebody comes out as gay, you know, we panic, you know, but through the love, through the love of Christ, not just any ordinary love, it has, because I know this family got together in the word and they began to speak counsel, this boy. He chose to live that kind of a lifestyle, but they kept on, kept on speaking the word of God to him. So after a while, he came back home and he said, you know, I can't do this anymore. And we must know again that it's a stronghold that the, that the enemy uses against the children. So a lot of love and, and no judgment but love. Amen. I'll just allow a few people to answer this one. Mrs. Isabella, you answer I don't, yes. I, I don't really <laughs> And no, no. um, somebody was asking me as a joke. Somebody was asking me the other day, you know, what if, what if? I said, no. Uh, from where I come from, they would beat it out of me. <laughs> 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 and, uh, <laughs> but but um, I, I agree. You know, being uh, <laughs> I agree with what you said. Um, I think it's important we separate what they're doing from who they are. Yeah. Because, because they have a lifestyle um, which we know is an abomination unto the Lord. That's what the word says. But we have to learn to separate that from the person. And that's the love, the agape you're talking about. Learn to love them through it. However, love them, but tell them the truth, which is, you know, set you free. Yes. Very briefly, and then uh, yeah, praise yeah. the Lord. I'll just quickly highlight this that it's something that we need to think about. We need to think about issue of identity. There's confusion, yeah. and because of the circular world, you know now it's legal somewhere, somewhere, you know, everywhere. So it's like you can't talk about against it. Yeah. So, <coughs> but you, you know, we've talked about love, but see again deeper than what that person is doing. You know, that you know that it's like, I call it beast. Mm -hmm. The beast of this world is taking over, over that person's mind. It's the game of the mind. Mm -hmm. And I believe there's nothing a prayer cannot do. Mm -hmm. You know, so I know we need to put that person in prayer. You need to pray because it's not something that you can do physically. Mm -hmm. You know, I pray God. Yes. Hallelujah. Um, one of the things that last time I spoke about uh, masturbation, and one of the doors that masturbation actually opens is the door of permission. Mm -hmm. Amen. And when that happens, is you know you are not, you start to see yourself as if you are a woman, you know you are not a lesbian, if you are a man, you know you are not homosexual. And then you start to see yourself having intercourse with other men 
or other women in your dream. So when, when you start to masturbate and open certain doors, it opens the doors to the spirits to come into your life, into your family, or into your home. So sometimes, um, last week I spoke about that, and said when you see your children, then you know manifesting certain things. There is a door that has been opened, and any door that is open can be closed as well. Amen? And when you close the door, you can also close the spirits, the portal that they used to come in. So this thing has an underlining uh, uh, stronghold, which is also spiritual. So we cannot just deal with the fact that, oh, he likes to be gay, he likes, she likes to be a lesbian. No, we have to tackle the spiritual part and see where did it come from? Where is the root of the problem? And begin to tackle it. And I agree with all the, the, the women of God that have spoken before me. I mean, love conquers all. I don't believe in throwing anybody away. Amen. I believe to use the word of God, the spirit of God, and, and, and embrace people and speak the truth. We cannot hide the truth. It is not of God for anybody to live in homosexual, and God does not want people to perish. So tell them the truth while loving them and counsel and go into deep prayers and set yourself. Sometimes we open that doors, we perish things that we have done, close the doors, and allow God to do the rest. Amen. That's wonderful, Gail. Last one. I'm taking what else can I add to all that was said. <laughs> so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use one of um, my own experiences because I find all the time I've been doing this for a few years now, and I was even talking with my husband the other day, and I said, "Honey, I've realized that over a period of four years that I've spoken to like 73 people who." have a problem with their sexuality or something or the other. And I realized that 75% out of those people were sexually abused, and this is real. 75% out of the 73 people that I've spoken to with sexual problems were sexually abused. And some of the, some of the, the, the stories I will tell you will blow your mind. I was sexually abused by my cousin, I was sexually abused by my father, I was sexually abused by my mother, my father, and my sisters. I had a situation like that. I was sexually abused by my brothers and sisters who told me that I needed to do all kinds of, my uncles, my pastors, the people who were sexually abused. And these things sometimes, they, they, they blow your mind. How well, people can be abused from these different situations. But what I've, I want to zero in on something that Evangelist Claire said, is that if this, could you imagine if someone at the age of three years old was sexually abused, but I've never said that to nobody. It means that they've already been open to these parts of, 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 of um, perversion, waiting, waiting for the right time to manifest. And you're going through your, all your life, and the child is 15 years old, and 16 years, then suddenly the child comes and says, I'm gay. And you're wondering, where, did, where the hell did that come from? It came all the way when the child was three years old, and there was something that happened that was never dealt with that is coming back now to manifest itself in another form. So some, what, I, what I do is that when I have people with these different things, and sometimes that's why you need the Spirit of God. And, and Pastor talked about having someone that you can, your friend, somebody that you can, you can actually talk to other than your pastor. Nothing is wrong with that. People that you can confess things to, people that you can have a relationship with, that you can talk spiritual things, you can talk about your own underlining issues, is that we as Christians all have the, the, the Spirit to discern. And we've got to rely on that spirit of God that is inside of us to pick up anything that doesn't make sense. And sometimes we tend to have a thought and tend to think, oh, maybe it's me, it's me. No, it's not you. You might find that if you investigate a thought that you're having, it has something to do with the person and something they're experiencing. And as a counselor, sometimes I ask people questions, like there was this young lady sitting, up. I'll close with this. There was this young lady sitting, um, no, this young man sitting ne next to me one time. And he came to me, but he didn't know the reason why he came. And I was, God, this is a trouble because there's nobody else in the building. And I really don't counsel men without somebody else in the building. So I told him, you better sit down there, I'll be back. So I called to see uh, when the next pastor was gonna be there. And he said he was on his way. So I heard his voice and I decided to chat with this man. And in the midst of it, I said, God, I don't know what my problem is. The man said, he's coming to see me and I don't know, you've gotta help me. But I the spirit of the Lord gave me a question. He said, ask this guy, if he was abused by his mother. But in my mind, listen to this, because I want you to understand that the Spirit of God is very discerning when you put things in your spirit. In my mind, I'm thinking physical abuse. 
I'm thinking that a woman can never abuse a son, so it gotta be physical abuse. So I switched my mind now, I switched my mind by force, and I said, um, I'm, not, I'm not talking about um, 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 sexual abuse, you know. I'm talking about physical abuse. Were you ever abused by your mother? And there was a silence. And I thought, no, this can't be physical abuse. I shake myself, I said, um, did you understand what I said? He said, yes. He said, um, Pastor, I was not physically abused. I was not physically abused by my mother. Then I said, okay, all right. Then by your father, he looked at me. And then he said, he started crying. And I said, God, what is this? What have I done? What, 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 what do I do? But then I really later realized that he was abused by his mother sexually with his father's presence in the presence of his sisters. So the old family, he was forced to abuse while they watch. You understand? So because of one question that, I, that, that the Holy Spirit prompted in my spirit, I got all this information. So sometimes, I want to just see Rebecca, you know what Pastor said. Sometimes you're just being a friend to somebody and just ask them something as you said. Just think, you know what you are you doing? It is not you. But as the Holy Spirit is trying to draw your attention to something that you really can't see, and by the question and the attention that you give, it will provoke the oozing, the information, the pain to begin to ooze out. You know. So I pray that um, I will end on this. I pray that even as we are Christians and we are spiritual beings, and the Spirit of God is in us, the Spirit of discernment is in us, and we will take every opportunity to uphold the body of Christ as our brothers and sisters, so that it will be awesome total healing to everyone we encounter, whether you're a pastor, a minister, evangelist, a prophet, but as long as you're part of that body, you can be a blessing and a help to somebody that comes your way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Wonderful.